the ornithine cycle. So much like the nitrogen cycle, there's going to be many different ways you can draw this diagram. Textbooks and exam papers will represent it differently. So knowing the individual pieces, having that clear in your mind is going to help you to be able to map your version of the cycle onto whichever version they give you in the exam. So I'm going to do notes and diagram as a rough outline. I'm going to say first up that excess amino acids can't be stored. Like fats and carbohydrates, we can store them, uh, but amino acids can't be stored. So they're broken down and excreted. The breaking down process is called deamination. So you've got the amino, the amine group, and you're removing the amine group, which is the bit with the nitrogen in. So it's called deamination. Pretty important key term that will make sure you include that in all your answers. And they're deaminated in the mitochondria of liver cells. So this happens in the liver and specifically in the mitochondria of the liver cells. Okay, so let's define deamination. Deamination is the removal of the amine group. You need to call it the amine group, not the amino group. They dock marks for that. Well, they don't give you marks if you call it the amino group. That's technically speaking wrong. Okay, so how does this look? I'm going to kind of try and keep nitrogen or nitrogen contain containing compounds in green on this diagram. So we have our amino acid. So the amine bit there, in fact, this amino acid can all go in green. If we remember what an amino acid looks like from last year, we have a central carbon. We have an R group, which is different for all the different amino acids. And the other side of that is just a hydrogen. I'm going to draw my it's c -O -O -H or carboxylic acid which i'm just going to draw it like this because i'm not too concerned about what the acid is doing right now and the nitrogen containing part nh2 and this is then broken down a process called deamination and we end up with an organic acid which is means an acid that contains carbon because we've got these carbons here and we end up with ammonia which is NH3. Okay, so, so far so good. Let's put a little note down about that. We can say the amine group is converted to ammonia. Okay, so what next? we can say that the ammonia enters the ornithine cycle and effectively it's converted to urea. That's the end product, which is gonna be removed by the kidneys. Okay, so this is going to be, to make the next, the compound that this makes, which is called citrulline, we need to add carbon dioxide. This forms citrulline. Not quite that straightforward because we combine that with the, the compound which gives this cycle the name called ornithine. And remember, this is all happening inside of the mitochondria of the liver cells. So ammonia plus ornithine plus carbon dioxide gives us citrulline. And this part of the reaction is all happening inside of a mitochondria. So I'm just gonna draw my Christy pretty small. Just like that. Okay, so what next on this cycle? Well, I'll draw the cycle now and then we'll put the important notes that I've extracted from all the past papers down here. So citrulline, this next compound has two names, some in the textbook, some in the exam papers. I've chosen the one from the exam papers, obviously. So it's in the exam paper, it's generally called arginosuccinic acid. I'm going to put these guys in blue just to show the black is inside the mitochondria, the mitochondrion, and the blue is just going to be outside the mitochondrion in the cytoplasm of the liver cell. To make this happen, then we need to add some ATP. 
And in fact, we don't form ADP, we actually form adenosine monophosphate, AMP. So two phosphate bonds are broken there. And then we add some, some more nitrogen in the form of NH2. This is a compound called aspartate. I think you don't need to know the names. And this goes in and water comes out. This varies. There's different versions of this. This is actually a bit more complicated than obviously we're putting across here. And so water comes out. Sometimes this is included in the diagram. Sometimes it's not. And then the intermediate compound, there's one between these two, is called arginine. There's nothing happening that we need to know about between these two steps. And then the final one, obviously, is a cycle. So we go back around to the beginning and we go one more curvy arrow. We go water goes in and we get our urea coming out. And urea obviously is, then moves off in the bloodstream and that is filtered and removed by the kidneys. Okay, so ornithine plus ammonia plus carbon dioxide citrulline. Quite important happening inside the mit mitochondria. Deamination is a removal of the amine group from the amino acid to form the ammonia in the first place. And then we go through other reactions. These are rarely asked about, um, but the, you are supposed to know their names. Arginosuccinic acid or arginosuccinate, if you prefer, to arginine. Arginine then gets converted into urea and, and ornithine by adding water. Okay, so let's finish off the notes and hopefully it's going to make as much sense as I can possibly explain it. So the amine group is converted to ammonia. You say ammonia enters the ornithine cycle. Ultimately, they want to know. This comes from an exam paper. This was the next answer. It's converted to urea. So we can do that as a little flow diagram. Ammonia plus CO2 plus ornithine goes to citrulline. And then that's the most important stage, basically, that we need to know about. There is a question on how citrulline enters or exits the mitochondrion. Well, this is not a simple molecule, and it's not fat-soluble. You're not expected to know that. But how does a large molecule generally go across a membrane? Well, it's going to be through a transport protein or carrier protein, and therefore it's going to be either facilitated diffusion or it's going to be active transport, one of those two. The, the exam answer actually accepts both as long as you justify it um, for either, either, either way. You can say it's going with or against the concentration gradient. It's a large molecule. It needs to cross a membrane. It's not fat soluble. And they are, as long as you justify it, you can say either facilitated diffusion or active transport for that one. Next up, quite important, we can say that citrulline moves into from the mitochondria into the cytoplasm. If it's in the matrix, this happens as well. I've drawn it in the matrix. And remember, let's be specific of liver cell. Next up, we can say that urea basically is removed by the kidneys. There's also marks on the ornithine cycle, which is more of a kidneys question, but it says high concentration of urea in the blood actually decreases the water potential of the blood, which increases the water reabsorption by the kidneys. Can't even spell blood. I put three O's in it. I'm an idiot. This decreases the water potential. Of the blood which in turn increases water reabsorption by the kidneys. As I'd recommend for every single topic, look at the past paper questions on this. As I said, get the cycle, the four major parts, and in fact, to be honest, the deamination into of amino acids into ammonia is where most of the marks are here. And then if it's not here, then generally it's the combination with ornithine carbon dioxide to make citrulline. There's not so much on this. The Then the other next main area of questions is the removal of urea or what happens to this. Um, 
knowing these intermediates is handy. You may see water added in here. You may see other intermediates added in here. As I said, every diagram is different. This is actually a more complicated system than this diagram represents, but these are the bits that you need to know. Um, have you got those past paper questions? If you do have any queries or you think that you can improve my diagram, then send it to me and I'll happily refilm this video for sure.